Hello, everyone. I think I got my mic working tonight, which is good. That's uh, better than where we were picking up last week. Thank you all for tuning in to another episode of Green Bay Rewind. I am super excited. We are here on a victory Tuesday. Uh, I, I don't know. Victory Tuesday, victory Monday, yesterday, whatever. It's always nice to uh, do the show after a victory. So thank you guys for hanging out. Thanks for watching. Um, Kind of start things off. Let's see where, where people are watching from. I see a whole list of people. I got Joe checking in from Eau Claire. It's my old stomping ground. CVTC alumni represent. <laughs> uh, Steve coming in from Florence, Kentucky. Jimbo. Jimbo with a banger of a question last week uh, coming in from Madison. Appreciate you coming back, Jimbo. Katie from Iowa. Katie, thank you. Also, I owe Katie a big thank you. Uh, she has sent me stars a couple times in here. It doesn't show in the chats for me, so I never know until after the fact. Do not send me stars. I don't, I don't, I, it's greatly appreciated, but um, Katie, I appreciate all the support from day one. You're the greatest. Thank you so much. Michael coming in from Oklahoma. Frankie still dead to me up in the UP, which is practically Canada. Frankie, I'm glad you got internet up there. I didn't, I, I know electricity was just invented up in the UP not long ago. So I'm, I'm glad you got internet now. <laughs> Ron in Appleton, uh, Becca in Swami, my Uncle Brian in Hudson. Hey, Brian, good to see you. Uh, a couple more here, and then we'll kind of get kicked off. Uh, Corey in New Ulm. Corey, good to see you again, man. George in Hamill, Illinois. Oh, Bears territory. Uh, Nicole in Knoxville. My guy Joshua in Buffalo. Leanne in Lake Arrowhead, Cali. Appreciate you uh, stopping by. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Casey, get out of here. I'll block you. No, K Casey is a big Packers fan from Green Bay. So let's get into things. Uh, first things first, let's post the giveaway uh, in the forms or the form here. Uh, fill this out. If you're watching throughout the show when I do the giveaway and you are the winner, make sure you comment that you're here and then we'll draw your prize. Only one entry per person, please. So even when I post it later, just post it or just make sure you only enter one time. Um, yeah. So, uh, looking forward to do another giveaway. Thanks to Nicolay law for that, but we'll get into that uh, a little bit later, but let's, get, let's get into this game. Packers hold on against the Rams 24 to 19. Anytime you can get a West coast win, that is a big win in my book. Um, you know, love had an okay game 15 of 26 for 224 yards, two touchdowns and an interception, which we will talk about uh, 126 yards on the ground for the team at 4.2 yards per carry. I wish we would have seen more uh, attempts if we're being honest, but you know, you'll take what you can get. The Packers were obviously without a few weapons. We were without, um, Jair. We were without Christian, uh, Devante Wyatt. And then of course, Romeo Dobbs. I don't know the whole story of the Romeo Dobbs thing. I didn't post anything about it because I don't know the whole story. I feel like it was a, I, I don't know. There's obviously something that happened internally, whether it was uh, frustration with the game plan, whether there's an argument, whether there's something else. Not not for me to say, um, but, you know, I did hear that he is planning on reporting back to practice tomorrow. So it seems like they had a nice talk. Everything kind of got worked out. We saw this frustration last year with Jair. Things worked out. They talked through it. They worked through it you know, we're, we're here now and everything's good. I have no doubt in my mind that, uh, that the, the same will happen with Romeo. Um, I don't, I just can't see it being about the game plan. If the Packers had came out with the game plan that they had against the Colts, where they just ran, 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 then I can maybe understand that he's being used as just blocking and maybe the frustration. That's why I think there's more to it. The Packers stayed very balanced, uh, last Sunday. They rushed it um, in the against the Colts. They rushed it like over 50 times. Last Sunday, they rushed it uh, 30 times and 26 pass attempts. Pretty balanced offense. So it wasn't overly aggressive running. So I, I couldn't imagine why you'd be upset with the game plan. He would have definitely had his opportunities in the game. So I think there's got to be more to it than what we know. And that's not uncommon as a Packers fan, right? There's... The Packers keep stuff very tight-lipped. Um, I think 
I, I think for the most part, that's for the best. Obviously, it leads to a lot of speculation, which we're, we've been seeing. But I, I think it'll be fine. We're going to see Romeo return back to practice this week. I'm sure he's going to be there on Sunday playing unless something crazy happens. But I don't foresee it being an issue going forward. Or at least maybe I'm just optimistic, but I, I think we'll be good. Uh, Jordan Love, we talked about his stats. You know, he had uh, the first half was a little rocky at times. I still think he's dealing with that leg where he's not really leaning into the passes how he'd want to. It seems like maybe it's getting better, but that rust is still there. Um, we obviously had that that horrible pick six that he'll never live down in his entire career. That's one that's going to always be brought up by Bears fans or Vikings fans or anything like that. Um, rolling to you know his right in the end zone, they did that like kind of bootleg out to the right blindside defender hits him and then he goes to throw it away as he's falling tucker kind of stops on the play the defender unfortunately did not you know pick six but i will say maybe this is me as a packers fan this is kind of the copium i i honestly if it's between taking a safety and and a uh, you know the interception i i get where jordan's coming from right he doesn't want to take this safety it's not like it's okay. We're taking a sack and we're live to see another day. It's either you're you're taking the safety and you're punting the ball back with two minutes left in the game or two minutes left in the half, excuse me, and you have a defense that's struggling to stop this Rams Rams offense. Maybe that ends up being a nine point play, right? Safety and then they score a touchdown right before half. Rather, you throw a pick six, but you get the ball back immediately. You drive down the field. You get a field goal. Now you made it a four-point play instead. Um, like I said, that's probably just me like kind of coping with it now after the fact. Obviously, you never want to see a pick six in that situation, uh, especially one in that, in that uh, regard where you're just like falling with the safety and you're just kind of throwing up a, a prayer ball. But in the grand scheme of things, that might have been the better of the two outcomes. Uh, once again, probably just me coping as a Packers fan. But now in hindsight, it, I don't hate it as much because it allowed that offense to put the momentum together before the half. You got the points from Narvison, came out, and you maybe brought that momentum with you in the second half. So uh, nice to see that second half continues to be the point where the Packers kind of make those adjustments. We saw it against Minnesota. First half was horrid. Second half looked like what we we're expecting as Packer fans kind of the same thing this week. We saw an okay couple drives in the first half. Other than that, it was uh, pretty bad. And, and I think maybe it was just one drive really uh, that was pretty solid in the first half, but then the second half, they kind of settled in. Now at one point there was, uh, you know, the second half, we let the Rams get back into it. And I think we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, you know, I saw, uh, Aaron Nagler, who talked about at one point, uh, the Packers on third downs were like averaging like a third and 12, which that is a very tough recipe to win in the NFL. Um, so I don't know what the solution to that is. I think we're going to talk a little, little bit more about it, uh, when I break down the Cardinals game, but you obviously can't have that, but it was nice to see Jordan uh, connect with Tucker on two touchdowns in the second half. I still see so many people always comparing love to Rodgers. Um, Rodgers was one of the most accurate quarterbacks in NFL history. Jordan is not Rodgers, and that's okay. Jordan is definitely going to be more of a gunslinger. That's fine. I've seen, I, I watched for years, years as fans complained that Rodgers was too conservative with the ball, would get into a little hole in he would go into that robotic mode of like not wanting to make the mistakes. So I don't know. Is it better to have a quarterback who's going to live and breathe and just be like, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take chances and I'm going to live to see the next day or the next play. You know, if we end up throwing an interception, I'm still going to take chances. I'm not going to, you know, uh, get scared and, and play super conservative. I don't know if that's the better solution or not. I know a lot of Packer fans love Brett Favre's play and I, now they're complaining that Jordan Love kind of plays similarly. That pass to Reed, where he just heaved it into triple coverage and put it right on the money, that was a very Brett Favre-esque play. Uh, probably not what you always want to see, but 
Brett Favre did win three MVPs, went to back-to-back Super Bowls. I, I think you can win with a gunslinger, especially with some of the arm talent that Jordan has. So he's not Rodgers. And the sooner we accept that, the sooner everyone will be happy because every quarterback's different. And, and that's fine. That's great. Um, you know, that's, I don't know. It's nice. It's a nice change. There's a lot of games where you're just like, Rodgers, just for something try to make a play rather than just being so perfect to every play and i'm not i'm not trying to bash rogers i i loved rogers i appreciate everything he did for the organization um when he threw it deep you knew you knew odds are it was going where it needed to be and it was a, a high percentage throw and all of that I'm certainly not bashing rogers but you know love's just not rogers and that is great uh every every quarterback's their own quarterback and they can win Obviously, we see Jordan can win. He's he's made a lot of great throws. I did see also uh, Jordan right now currently has the highest drop rate in the NFL at 11.1%. So his stat line's not looking great, especially from a completion percentage. I think he had like a 56% completion last week. There are some drops. You know, we saw Dontavian Wicks uh, he, last few weeks or last couple weeks, I should say. He's had some issues where balls might not be perfect placement, but they're he's getting his hands on them and he's not able to come up with them. And as frustrating as it is, right? I see fans that are like, Hey, he should be cut. He shouldn't be playing. And it makes me think of like 2015, 2016, when you had this receiver who was always getting open and had issues with holding onto the ball and then ended up going on to become one of the greatest receivers for the Packers in Devontae Adams. Wicks might be having some issues with drops, but he's not having issues getting open. And I think as that confidence builds, as they get that chemistry, as they figure that out, I think he's going to be a big weapon for the Packers. He's already a big weapon for the Packers, and it's only going to keep growing. Um, I'm excited to see what Wicks has. And uh, you know, he, he's a weapon. He's always getting open. Tucker Kraft, we talk about him and boy, is he coming into his own? Um, I, I, I think we can all officially announce and, and be happy that that third round drinks that Kudinkus was running into seems like it's kind of over. You had Sean Ryan, a third round pick who's been performing really well in that guard spot and Tucker Kraft, who's absolutely a, a, a monster of a uh, tight end for us he's and, and i'm not counting out luke by any means but boy tucker is showing that he's tight end number one right now on this team i hope we see some double tight end plays coming up i hope we can utilize that because if both of them can get involved in this offense i think it's going to be great i saw uh, tucker's currently sixth in receiving yards as a tight end He's tied for first uh, in touchdowns with three first in yards after carry per reception. And um, yeah, he's just, he's really making a name for himself in the NFL. And I think it's the first time since probably Finley that I felt like, I mean, Jared cook, I guess kind of splashed towards the end there, but really since Finley that I feel like we have a vertical threat tight end that can make big plays. And I, I can't wait to continue to see that growth. A couple other like really great call outs from the game. I mean, Jaden Reed, we talked about that triple coverage throw, putting it right where Jaden Reed could get it and defenders, you know, it was a lot harder of a play to make for the defenders. But man, that catch by Reed, uh, I saw a stat as well that on passes over 20 yards, Jaden is five for five with uh 44 yards of reception one touchdown 224 yards total and when a quarterback targets him right now at uh 20 plus yard pass it's a perfect pass rating of 158.3 my gosh if uh there's conversations about who's wide receiver one prior to this season i think jane's kind of settling that argument he just seems to be a, a weapon that's always going to make plays. No matter what, no matter who's on him, he's going to make a play. <laughs> I was I was joking with some friends because for the longest time, and we we probably still going to hear it, like, oh, well, the receiver wasn't taken in the first round. The quarterback's never thrown a touchdown to the receiver and taken in the first round. So, you know, I was joking that, man, imagine how good Jaden would be if he was drafted in the first round as opposed to the second round. It would just... 
and just really like bump them up that next level. <laughs> um, another great thing kind of before we jump into some of the woes from the game, Xavier McKinney, first player since the NFL merger to start uh, with five interceptions, five in a row. Uh, so an interception, five games in a row with a team in his first five games with the team. Uh, he should have had a second interception on Sunday, but we'll, we'll let that slide. You know, when you're a ball hawk and you're making plays, we'll let them slide every once in a while. Uh, but what an incredible signing for this team. Uh, Xavier's still very, very young. I think he's 25, if I'm not mistaken, and he's playing the best football yet. I cannot wait and I cannot believe that we have him on contract and we get to witness the safety play for another few years. I feel like collectively as Packer fans, maybe we should all get together, pass around a thank you card so we can mail it to the uh, Giants uh, general manager. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe that'd be a good bit. You think you'd think you'd get a response? Um, and then, you know, kind of talk about some of the woes that we saw in the game. You know, if I, if I had to talk about some, I think uh, defense is going to be the biggest thing. Yes, we saw some turnovers. Uh, we saw the fumble recovery by Xavier. We saw the interception by Xavier. But the uh, second week in a row where the pass rush has been kind of missing in action. Now, it's nice that we have a defensive coordinator who will mix things up. Jeff Halfley seems to be drumming up blitzes wherever he can to produce some sacks wherever he can because it just doesn't seem like that front four is really getting the pressure that they should be. Uh, I see Gary's getting double teamed a lot. And he's getting chipped a lot. He's still got to win those. You know, we still got to get pressure from him uh, for how much they're paying him. You, you really like to see some more pressures. I, I trust that it's going to keep going as this defense keeps, uh, keeps developing. I think we'll see Gary maybe start to get home a bit more. At least I hope so uh, for how much money you're paying. Once again, I'm an optimistic Packers fan. I'm always going to think that things are going to get better. We really miss Devontae Wyatt in that game, whether it's from the pass rush he provides in the middle of that defense to the rushing uh, defense. There are so many times during that game where our defenders were in the backfield right away and still could not get that running back down and you'd gain three, four plus yards. We saw that on the fourth and one where the defender basically met the running back at the backfield. The running back juked it out and just got a first down. That's the stuff you just can't do. I mean, when you're meeting them in the backfield and they're still getting three to four yards, it makes for a long day. Um, I was really hoping the Packers were going to come in to Sunday's game with the game plan that the Rams seem to have, which is we're going to just run it until it doesn't work anymore. And even even their run was working still. So I I don't know. They, they really seem to gash our defense on the rush. Uh, I think what what ended up happening was they got themselves in a hole and they had to start throwing a little bit more, which we were trying to blitz because we weren't getting pressure. And then it opened up things for the receivers. So that's concerning. Obviously penalties were slightly better this week. I think we had, uh, we had six penalties for 34 yards. So definitely a lot better of week for penalties. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on the game. Obviously I've been rambling a lot there. Uh, but it's always nice to kind of cover the uh, the background of the game. Um, let's see here. Charles Woodson, free agent pickup. It was a good draft pick. Uh, must be uh, in a response to someone else here. Uh, ben Ben hits it right on the head. You know, of course, his name is Ben, so he's going to have really good points. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I still have faith as well, uh, Ben. Um, you know, Wix is always open, and... I will take having a receiver who can just find open ground and get attempts over a receiver that maybe can catch everything, but just can't get open. You're going to have some, uh, you know, as Nicole says here, you know, some mental mistakes, but you're pulling out a win, especially, especially in the uh, West coast where the Packers have been notoriously bad. Um, I think I saw a question, Katie, love the hoodie. Is it from the pro shop? It is. My wife got it for me for a birthday present, which I completely forgot I had because um, my birthday's in June. So I it was in my closet. I forgot I even got it. We bought some hoodies, you know, recently. And she said, oh, you got that hoodie I got you for your birthday. And I said, what hoodie? She had to remind me. So uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of it as well. 
Um, you know, as we're kind of looking at the NFC North, as the season's continuing on um, at the NFC North, everyone won this week, uh, except the Lions. They were on a bye week. The Bears uh, just absolutely dominated in their game. Uh, they cut, they're they playing this week in London against the Jaguars, so they'll be on at 830 Central. Lions are coming back from their bye. They're playing the Cowboys at the 325 Central game in Dallas, which should be a good game to watch. Minnesota's on a bye week, which is a uh, good time for them. They got some players that are banged up. Aaron Jones missed half the game, I believe, with a hip injury. So they're looking really good. I mean, the NFC North, I believe, is the only division in NFL right now where all teams are better than 500. So really competitive game or really competitive season for the NFC North this year. Uh, but man, it's gonna be it's gonna be a slugfest till the end. Anything can happen. There's a lot of uh, a lot of weeks left. It's crazy how quick it goes, right? You know, we're already in week five or covering week five, heading into week six of the NFL. It just seems like you you snap your fingers and uh, you it's just gone, right? Time time's fleeting. Let's get into some questions. Um, yeah, feel free to drop some questions. Let's start answering them. Huge thank you to Legend Larry's for sponsoring uh, this year's show. If you've been watching every episode, I'm sorry. Sorry, you got to hear me be so thankful, but I am super grateful uh, for Legend Larry's. I've been going to Legend Larry's for many, many, many years now. It is obviously one of my top places in Green Bay that I love going all season long. If you're going to Legend Larry's during a game, whether it's a Badgers game or a Packers game, you can get a dozen wings for $10 when you're dining in, which is a killer deal. So go get yourself some wings. Thank you to Legend Larry's. Uh, I appreciate them immensely. Let's let's see what questions we got here. What do we got to answer? What do we got to talk about? I know we had a lot of really good ones last week, and I'm excited to see uh, some of the ones that we're seeing this week. You know, Ben, uh, Ben says, will Gary start to produce? I think Gary, I think Gary's producing more than maybe the, what we think. He's he's taking on a lot, right? There's that one shot where it showed three offensive linemen, or maybe it's two offensive linemen and a tight end, basically blocking him in certain plays. He's taking on a lot. Would we like to see more productivity out of him? Absolutely. No doubt about that. I think what we need is the other guys who are getting those one-on-ones, the Prestons, the um, interior, the Kenny Clarks. We need to see them start drumming up pressure so offensive line can kind of spread out their focus and give Gary more of those opportunities. Now I'm not saying Gary gets a pass by any means. We still need that production, right? We're paying him a lot of money. Uh, I I think he'll, as the season goes on, I'm hoping Jeff starts maybe moving him around, switching things up and finding a way to implement him more uh, to be able to drum up some stuff, whether it's blitzes and um, you know, blitzes or, or different ways to get him involved. Um, Sway Coda, good to see you, buddy. What's the biggest missing piece we could use at the trade deadline this year to get us over the top? Hmm, that's a good one. Um, you know, my first thought is, and I, I think it'd be tough to get this at the trade deadline, but my first thought is either a strong pass rusher, it seems like Preston. And I love Preston, but Preston maybe is showing his age a little bit more. Um, I don't know. I say I'm going to say that, and then you know he's going to have another game where they snap off and he gets two sacks like he did against the Titans. So um, may, either that or maybe some more depth at corner. It seems like uh, you know when Jair was out, seemed pretty thin. Even though we have Stokes and Valentine, but we especially noticed it without Valentine and Jair. So maybe some depth at corner. Uh, those would be kind of my two areas of concern if I am thinking about it. Um, Frankie says, what's your favorite restaurant in the Green Bay area? I'm going to give you a list, Frankie. I, there's no way I can name one favorite restaurant. Obviously, I love Legend Larry's. First and foremost, Legend Larry's. And it's not just because they're sponsoring the segment. I've been going to Legend Larry's a long time. I love Legend Larry's. Frankie, you know that we I love Legend Larry's. You and I would go together like every Monday and tell you, uh, became dead to me and moved away. But 
Legend Lair is absolutely incredible. Their sauces are like superb in my eyes. Uh, they balance flavor with heat really nicely. Um, big fan of the DOA and the Scary Larry. It doesn't get any more better than that. Rustique is uh, up there as well. They're, if you've never been to Rustique and you're coming to Green Bay, go check out Rustique as well. It's in an old church. The Where they make the pizzas is like kind of open. It's where the altar was. And so you can kind of watch them make pizzas. You sit in these old pews. Absolutely just like great vibes. And their pesto fries are incredible. They got wood-fired pizzas. Phenomenal stuff. La Caretta also is like one of my favorites as of late. Uh, they have incredible quesabiria tacos. Uh, the owners are huge Packers fans. And they're like part of the Packers everywhere. And they have like their flowers out front, make a big G. They're incredible. Their restaurant's great. Like Simone Biles, when her, her husband played for us last year, they went to La Creta. Aaron Jones liked La Creta a lot. So great place. I would definitely recommend that. And there are so many others in the Green Bay area, but uh, that's a great question, Frankie. But those are those are definitely like my top recommend, recommendations for like lunch or dinner. When you're talking breakfast, pancake place all day long that and black honey hashery those two places are incredible and then if you're like me and you love coffee coffee wizards is like next level best espresso i've ever had so it's kind of my rundown obviously you can find all of those all of my information or all of my personal opinions uh, on my website thegreenbayguy.com so if you are coming to town and you need that resource check out my website thegreenbayguy.com Joshua is going to Legend Larry's on Saturday. Nice man. Get some uh, get some DOA wings for DOA wings for me. <laughs> Chad says, "Does Mason love Legend Larry's as much as you?" So Mason is my one year old son. Uh, he, you know, he doesn't love the DOA sauce quite as much yet. He, when I gave it to him, he screamed like it was like it was spicy or something. Uh, and that was a joke for anyone who who doesn't understand my sense of humor. I did not give my son the uh, the spiciest sauce. Uh, at Legend Larry's, my my son really likes their honey barbecue wings, though he he is a big fan of their boneless wings. Ooh, Jason, Jason's coming in with the heat. Good to see you again, Jason. What is your opinion of Quay Walker? Bus boom or too early to call? Oops, um, that's a good question, Jason. I think it's too early to call either which way. You know, I think. We've seen, what is he on his third defensive coordinator now? No, maybe a second because we had, I'm trying to think because he came in in 22. Yeah, second second defensive coordinator. It's a different different system. I will say Adrian Cooper seems to look like more of the part in this defense. But for how athletically gifted Quay is, I think it's just too early to say. I hope we start seeing that. You know, against Minnesota, it seemed like he had a lot stronger of a game. Last week, it was a little bit, uh, kind of on the rockier side again, but I'm hoping we start seeing, you know, that production that you expect out of a linebacker that you took in the first round clock's ticking though. His contract's coming up. He needs to, he needs to make that, uh, that leap for you to say, okay, he deserves that money that maybe you'd need to pay him to keep him around. But um, yeah, that's a good question. I hope he just booms. I hope it's uh I hope he he comes out swinging and he looks like the next Ray Lewis here soon. Uh, very on point, Jimbo. Another great question. Uh, what is my favorite Cardinals Packers memory? Oh man, I feel like there's not a lot like that stand out in a positive way. You know, obviously you saw the like hail mary game with Jeff Janis. Unfortunately, he lost that game, so it's like you kind of take away that that favorite memory by by losing. Uh, the 09 shootout was a lot of fun. Once again, you're also on the wrong side of it there. So that's really tough. I did go to a, a Packers uh, Cardinals game in 2012 or 2013. I want to say, I want to say it was 2012. That was a lot of fun because the Packers won. I don't really remember anything except Tom, Tom Crabtree's touchdown in that game. So it's tough. I don't know if I have like a favorite, I'll, you know, I'll say the Rasul Douglas game. That was fun. Uh, that that was kind of Rasul's coming out party as a Packer and really saw him take the next step as a, as a quarterback after that game. So um, we'll go with that one. That was a good memory. Thanks for that question again, Jimbo. 
What one current Packers player would you take to Legend Larry's for wings? Who, Katie? That's a good question. Um, so when Oren Burks was drafted, I took him out to Legend Larry's. Him and uh, uh, a couple other guys that I don't, I don't think the other two made the team. Marcus and uh, what was it? Kendall? I'm trying to think what Kendall's last name was, but he was a seventh round pick. He might have made the team, but I, I don't remember. But I took them all at the Legend Larry's, and if I had to pick one on this year's team, I mean, I, I think I'm going to eliminate, like, you know, obviously, like, the the Jordans and the Jadens and those guys. I'd say I'd say Edrin Cooper. Uh, you know, Edrin Cooper. I, I'm a I'm a big fan of linebackers, so uh, Edrin Cooper would be a fun one to take out. Um, let's see. Josh says, what's the percent chance that Rome is completely unaffected by this past week and gets back to work like nothing happened? Well, unfortunately, Josh, I don't, uh, great question. Thank you. First and foremost, I don't think Rome will ever be completely unaffected in the eyes of Packers fans. I think, unfortunately, he's always going to be deemed now as this diva, even though we don't know the whole story. Uh, Packer fans are always going to just like, not all Packer fans, of course, I, I say this in generalization. And I don't mean to, because it's not all, it's just like the loud minority. But I think you're going to see Packer fans that always complain that he's like a, a whiner or a crybaby or like that he gives up on the team. And I don't think that's the case. You know, we all have bad days at work. I, I have bad days at work. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't have the uh, ability or the uh, luxury of skipping work uh, the same, the same way that maybe Rome does. Now, should he have done it that way? No, but we all have bad days at work. I've had uh, disagreements with coworkers or leaderships that made me want to skip work. I'll tell you that much. But um, yeah, I, I, uh, I don't. I, I, I think internally, it's probably going to go on business as usual, and it's going to be fine going forward. But I think from Packers fans' uh, standpoint, you're always going to see people talking about that, people bringing that up. And that's going to be forever. For the rest of his career, he could go on to be a Hall of Famer, and you're going to still see people complain about that. Uh, great question, though. Jenny, Jenny, good to see you. Jenny always ranks like top of my interactors on Facebook. So, Jenny, I appreciate you and all the positivity you bring. Uh, I think everyone in here is always bringing some uh, some good some good positivity. Um, so I appreciate y'all. Uh, but Jenny says, have you ever been to Zesty's frozen custard? I love Zesty's it. Great, great dessert place. A lot of history. Their locations are great. Very like retro throwback. I was sad that they closed down their one on, um, that was like the walk up stand. Cause that felt like it's really nice to walk on the path and get some, some, some custard. Um, but yeah, great, great, uh, great place um yes thanks joe uh kendall donerson yes yeah, seventh round pick he came with wings really nice guy um i can't remember what marcus's last name is off the top of my head but uh all three of them came and we hung out got to talk with all of them it was, it was a lot of a lot of fun uh other than lambo field what's your favorite packers landmark Ooh, that is tough you know green bay i'm very fortunate that green bay has so much like just history and things that you can go to I'm trying to think if there's like one Packers landmark that stands out. I really like Curly Curly Lambo has an old cottage. Thank you for that question, Rob. Uh, Curly Lambo has an old cottage out on UWGB. I was supposed to have my wedding there. Uh, unfortunately they had high waters and the yard got all damaged. Uh, but my wedding ceremony was supposed to be at Curly Lambo's cottage. And I ended up working out for the better in the long run because it rained on our wedding day and we had to move to the indoor uh, location either way. But Curly Lambo has this beautiful cottage out on UWGB campus, which it's free. It's like open to the public. You can't go into the building, but there's a nice backyard and it's on the bay and you just have that water swishing up. There's like picnic tables out there. So it's a really nice spot to just kind of relax. My wife and I would go for walks out there a lot. Uh, just because there's a huge trail that goes around the whole campus. Really nice when you uh, hit one of those three beautiful weather days a year that you can, can enjoy it here in Green Bay. Uh, outside of that, there's um, 
the heritage trail, which if you've never done it while you're in green Bay, like Joshua, I know you're coming this weekend. If you haven't done the heritage trail, there's a free map online. You can go drive around to all these great places on the, the heritage trail that have historical significance. They have old city stadium. They have curly Lambeau's birth house. They have Vince Lombardi's house when he lived in green Bay, which is a little odd because there's still residents in it. So it's still an active house that someone owns and you just kind of drive by it. So I, I don't know. I wouldn't necessarily go visit, you know, don't stop, don't take pictures, don't be weird, but you can kind of drive by. It's by where one of the old Zesties was. Um, but it's a really cool thing just kind of taking the city, see the historical, you know, spots around town. Um, but really good question, Ron. That's, uh, I was, uh, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of, fun spots to, to check out there. Um, Joshua says, what was that museum you went to the summer called again? So that was uh, out at the Rawhide Foundation, the Bart Star Museum, Bart and Cherry Star Museum, out at the Rawhide, Rawhide Foundation. Uh, it's about an hour away. They got weird hours. So I think they're only open during the week right now, unless something's changed. Check out their website, like rawhide.org. But it is, it's a boys camp. So uh, there are at-risk youth that stay there all the time. So it's a, like a big campus for them. So that's why they kind of have weird hours because they don't want visitors there where the kids feel like they can't be outside playing, doing their thing. And they want these, these boys to have kind of a normal uh, routine where it's not like tourists are always there. So really cool museum. Uh, really great to check out, but it is tough with the hours. Um, let's see here. Let's. I'll. I'll uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna drop the form. If you haven't entered yet, uh, enter the giveaway. We're gonna be drawing the winner here soon. If you have entered, don't do it again. Only one entry per person, please. So, there is the. There is the uh, link again. So, uh, once again, if you have not entered, enter. If you have, uh, just please don't do it a second time uh ohana packers joe uh would you bring robert sala in as a defensive analyst or some kind of assistant coach i mean i don't, I don't think it's up to if, what i would do i know he said that he's planning on going vacation and he's not planning on doing anything until the uh until the next season when the coaching hires kind of kick off i don't know though i don't know if i would i feel like that might create some issues in in my opinion so if i'm thinking about it from jeff halfley's perspective and I'm this defensive coordinator. And now this team brings in this guy who just got fired, but is a really good defensive coach. I'd be worried that there's going to be some conflict there where Halfley's trying to put in a game plan. And maybe Robert's like, hey, we, you know, we should be doing this. And then it just creates this like internal conflict of this guy who's obviously has a history of being a really good defensive coordinator and this guy that you've now hired to do the job kind of butting heads on what they should do. So I probably won't touch it. I think Robert's a great coach, especially from a defensive coach. He brings a lot of energy. Um, I So I think there's a lot there that uh, Robert can bring to a team. Now, if we had a defensive coordinator opening, say we still had Joe Barry and we let him go after the season, I would, I would 100% bring in Robert Sala for a defense coordinator. But given that we have a defense coordinator who's trying to implement his defense, I'm staying away from that. I would just let, I would let uh, kind of things lay as they are. Uh, good question though. All right, let's uh, let's do a giveaway. So if you if you haven't gotten it, sorry, your time's probably running out here. Oh, I got to get rid of that question. One second here. All right, I'm gonna grab this uh, these entries here. I got to hide some stuff, so I'm not. Uh, I don't want to dox anyone and give out anyone emails. So one second here, let me pull these and hide some stuff. So we got 20 entries. So good luck to people. I got to make sure that we have no, uh, no duplicates. Um, but I don't think we do. Cool. Looks good. Grabbing these throw it on the wheel all right all 
slowly figuring this out. All right, should have the wheel there. Gonna plug in these names. Good luck to you guys. Thank you again for watching. Um, and here we go. Round, round, she goes. Oh, Chad. Chad's a weekly watcher. Uh, good to see you, Chad. I'm sure you're in the comments. It would surprise me if you're not. I saw you earlier. So, uh, Chad, um, let's see here. You know the deal. One through 40, up or down. Let's see what you got. Uh, also, I, I'm sure you're here, but let me know. Uh, let me know you're you're here, I guess. Um, and then we'll go go from there. <clears throat> While we're waiting for Chad, I'm sure he's here, but grab those. All right. Stop sharing this. There we go. <clears throat> so Chad has until the end of the episode to let me know he's here. Otherwise, uh, he's going to forfeit his prize. Let's kind of start talking about the... Oh, there he is right there. Chad says 33 down. Did we get 33 drawn already? We did not. 33 right here. Chad, you can't see it. Good luck to you. Probably can't even see the number, but I'm sure you'll trust me. 33 down. What are we winning tonight? So, Chad, nice. You got the 1962 championship team photo, uh, which Joe won a couple weeks ago as well. He won one of those. Super cool photo. I have one now hanging up in my Packers room. Uh, love the photo. It's like the team goofing off when Lombardi stepped away. Uh, players are doing, I think, bunny ears with each other. Some are pretending they're kissing. Uh, they're just uh, kind of that uh, come out, you know, that that fun teammate uh, bonding. Uh, great, great photo. So um, I hope you're uh, stoked on that as well, Chad. So let's talk about. Let's get this. Um, also, before I, I, I pan over, uh, I just want to say thank you to Nicolay Law once again. I appreciate Nicolay Law for providing uh, for these giveaways. Without them, we could not do these giveaways. So uh, I am so grateful for them. And then, of course, all season long, if the Packers lose, we're doing a double drawing because they want to make sure that life is a little bit better, even when things aren't going that well. And as always, if you're injured, get Nicolay. Uh, I, I can't thank them enough for being one of the sponsors. Uh, they are great to work with. And yeah, hope uh, hope there's a long relationship there on, on these shows. So let's talk about the Cardinals and Packers. The Cardinals are two and three coming off a huge win against the 49ers. 49ers are tough this year. I don't know what's going on with them. Are they not as good as what we all are expecting? Is something going wrong there? I know they're dealing with a lot of injuries or without uh, McCaffrey, who's been having some issues with tendonitis, I think, in his knees. Um, or all right, some, something along those lines. I don't know exactly what it is. That doesn't sound right. Um, I think it's something else in his knees. But he's having some issues uh, with his knees that he's working on. So maybe that's a big part of it. Their offense runs through him, and it's just not as productive. Uh, but either way, the Cardinals are coming off a big win over them. Um, and it was in Santa Clara, which makes it even bigger. Packers are obviously coming in three and two after a win over the Rams. Um, how do these two compare? Let's take a look. Uh, let's break these down so that the Cardinals, uh, their total yards a game, they're pretty much in the middle of the pack at 14th ranked in the NFL with 338 yards. Average passing yards a game. They're not as pass heavy as they are rush heavy. So they're 24th in the NFL in passing at 181 yards uh, averaging per game. Their rushing yards per game on average is 156.4, which is good for fourth in the uh, NFL. From a points perspective, they're 12th in the league at 24 points a game on average. Packers, on the other hand, they're pretty, they're top 10 in all of those categories. Uh, so the total yards per game, they're fourth with 392 yards. Passing yards are ninth at 227 uh rushing yards on average they are third in the nfl with 164 yards per uh, game on average and then points per game they are eighth in the league at 25.6 so despite the cardinals having a lower uh side 
average for passing. Do not let that fool you. They have some weapons. They have Marvin Harrison Jr. I think he was the fifth overall pick in this last year's draft. He can go off at any point. He's a huge threat to the secondary. And then you have uh, Murray who can extend plays, who can make things happen with his legs. Not only that, but he can also throw on the run, which makes it even harder to defend. Super concerning from that aspect, especially where you saw we struggle with the rush last week. You have a team that's coming in, uh, you know, fourth in the league on average rushing yards. We greatly need Wyatt back. Um, now, on the flip side, let's take a look at their defenses here. So their defense is not the strongest. They have, excuse me, they have uh, 25th overall uh, defense for average yards at 360 yards per game they're they're giving up their passing yards 18th they're allowing 212 yards on average rushing yards 28th in the league 147 yards on average uh game per week that they're they're giving up and then the average points they're giving up is 27th in the league with 25.8 points uh, a game on average the packers on the flip side 22nd in the league for total yards given up each week at 345 on average. Uh, passing yards given up on average, they're 23rd at 231. Rushing yards, they're 11th at 114, which that kind of surprised me that they're only 11th uh, and they're only averaging 114. Maybe it's just because it seemed like the Rams were running all over us without Wyatt. But uh, I was kind of surprised when I saw that. And then the average points that they've given up is 14th in the league at 21.6. From a turnover perspective, the Packers are tied at first for a turnover differential of plus seven. They've given away nine interceptions and five fumbles, but they, or excuse me, they've had 14 takeaways. They've taken away nine interceptions, five fumbles, and they've given away five interceptions and two fumbles. Cardinals are plus two. They take care of the ball for the most part, but they don't really give it up. Uh, four interceptions, three fumbles they've taken away, and they've given away two interceptions or three fumbles. So it's not like Murray's, you know, throwing a lot of interceptions. It probably goes to show how much maybe they're relying on the run game, uh, the fact that they've had three fumbles. But, you know, we'll see what happens. I'm hoping the defense can kind of, uh, you know, keep keep forcing those turnovers, and hopefully we can kind of take, take care of that ball. So... Um, Jimbo's nailing it on the, on the head here. Once again, we need Jair back. I think we do see Jair back this week. Uh, that would be crucial for him to come back between him and Wyatt. I'm not sure who's going to be more crucial in this game, considering the fact that they are so strong in their run, but I think getting, getting, uh, Mark, you know, Jair back against Marvin is going to be huge, but we need, uh, we definitely need Wyatt back as well. Um, I see my guy Rob checking in of Green Bay Packers Daily. Great page. If you don't follow it, Rob's the man. He does a great live show every day. I want to say it's every day, Rob. Sorry, I'm at work. I miss some of them. Uh, but I see you going live all the time in the morning. Great live show. He takes phone calls. He's brave and takes phone calls. I don't take phone calls. But, uh, yeah, uh, go check out my guy Rob. But if I'm laying all the cards on the table, right, after kind of laying out all these stats and we're seeing how both these teams compare, if I were the Packers, here's how I'm approaching the game against the Cardinals. And I'm going to sound like a broken record. If you watch last week's, it's pretty much the same idea here. Get Josh Jacobs involved. Get Emmanuel Wilson involved. I felt like last week I was hoping we we're going to see much more involvement on them early on. And it seemed like considering we're going against the worst rushing defense in the NFL, we relied very heavily on the pass. I don't want to see that. I want to see start out by focusing on the rush. Last year when we saw success in this team, we saw a lot of it go through Aaron Jones. I think you need to replicate that. You need Josh Jacobs to be involved heavily. Make the defense stay honest. You know, I, I mentioned earlier at one point in the game, Thanks to Aaron Nagler. I saw this. He posted this. At one point in the game in the second half on third downs, the Packers were at, facing an average of third and 12 and two, or, you know, third and 12, I'll say. You can't see success in the NFL facing an average of third and 12 on, on uh, you know, when you're trying to convert and trying to stay in a game or keep your opponent out of a game. So 
make an emphasis on establishing that run, creating second and third downs that are manageable, open up play action, open up those, those easy to convert plays that you can keep the chains going. It's a very, like very cookie cutter thing. But when you're going against a defense that seemingly struggles against the run, there's no point in, in just forcing this game plan of passing the ball. You see too many mistakes happen, drops happen, that end up resulting, penalties happen, holding penalties. You see too many mistakes happen that end up putting you in these third and difficult to convert positions and let you punt the ball and then gas your defense out. We do not want that. Um, special teams issues. Uh, rules change on the kickoff. So, yeah, I mean, you've seen how we paid Keyshawn money because he was an all-pro returner two years in a row. Now, Keyshawn's been pretty solid as a, as a nickel corner. Um, we saw the dropped, should have been pick six earlier on in the season. But for the most part, Keyshawn's been very solid in that corner role. Now, he's not like a, an all-pro corner, but you paid him money to be a, a return guy, and now teams aren't going to kick it to him. They're taking the, they're kicking it out of the end zone, getting a 30-yard uh, start every time, and uh, it's kind of frustrating. You'd like to see a return guy there. I really wish we'd kind of use him in kickoff situations. I don't know why, or uh, excuse me, punt return situations. I don't know why they don't. I'm not sure why they put Jaden Reed back there every time, but he's an explosive returner. I, I feel like you should just put him in there, punt returns, kick returns, get your money out of the guy. He's a great returner. Um, as we talked about, I'm hopeful that we see some guys come back from injury. I think we see Jair back. I think they're kind of returning or hoping that he's going to return on this timeline. So I think we see him back. Wyatt to me is like the biggest thing he missed with an ankle injury. We need Wyatt back in the middle. He's been very disruptive this year, whether he's getting sacks, whether he's disrupting the run game. He's been crucial against a team that's really run heavy. You you need that guy back. Containing Kyler is another thing that's going to be such a challenge. Kyler is fast. Kyler can get out of the pocket. He can extend plays, which then makes the job harder on cornerbacks. You need to be able to contain him, make him uncomfortable, make him force throws you know, get turnovers, really get him off his game early, put him in a hole, make him one dimensional. Once again, very cliche cookie cutter things. But when you're going against a team that is very run focused and has a lot of success in the run, I think you need, that's where you need to put the emphasis first. Don't let Kyler beat you with his legs. Don't let the ground game get going, make him beat you with his arm. And I think you're going to win the game there. Um, yeah, any uh let's take a look here. Uh Jenny says Jacob uh does need to be involved. Running is important as passing. Defense stepped up, special teams so much better. Glad the kicker improved. Whelan still excelling. Yeah, Whelan. I mean, you just you never really hear his name. Whelan, uh, thank you for the question, Jenny. Whelan's been Whelan and Dealing. I know that <laughs> that's the dad joke in me. Uh that he's just been having a killer year. Uh you love to see it. For a long time, punchers plagued us, so it's nice to kind of see that be a strength of ours. Um, and yeah, Narverson went one for one on his on his field goals and looked great. You know, maybe it was just a day of the yips. Who knows? Um, let's end with our story of the week. I, I enjoy kind of doing some research and finding these stories, different stories to do. Today's story is a fun one. It's not a very long one, but uh, it's still a great one nonetheless. And I'm, I'm curious if uh, this is going to be a new one for anyone listening. So in 1935, the Packers were really excited about this center, this, this prospect of a center out of Michigan. Uh, they were eager to sign him. So they, uh, or they were eager to sign him after his collegiate career was wrapping up. So they offered him a contract of worth $110 a game, which if you convert that into today's dollars, it's $2,500 a, uh, a game that he'd be making. Despite this tempting offer from the Packers, this player chose to pass it up in favor of attending law school at Yale. Now, this decision turned out to be an okay one for this player. Um, this player, uh, Gerald Ford, 
would go on to have a remarkable career in politics. He rose from being a member of the House of Representatives to eventually becoming the 38th president of the United States. So he may have missed out on a couple championships with the Green Bay Packers, but I think he's probably going to be remembered more uh, in the long run by being the 38th president of the United States. But pretty interesting. He had a lot of uh, options on his plate, whether it was you know, playing center for the Packers or leading the country. I'm not sure which is more desired. I'd probably rather be play for the Packers. I don't think I, you couldn't pay me enough to be the president. But uh, yeah, pretty, pretty interesting. The history uh, when you see a team of this of this magnitude and this uh, this tenure, uh, what the stories that come from it. So that is the uh, that is the story of the week. Kind of wrap up this show. I just want to say thank you all for watching. I've seen a lot of familiar faces in here week in and week out. I appreciate you guys all hanging out. I appreciate, once again, thank you to Legend Larry's and Nicolay Law for sponsoring the show and making the giveaways and all the fun stuff we're doing possible. Without them, it'd be really difficult as well. So uh, really appreciative. Thank you all so much once again. We will see you next week, same time, same place, and hopefully we're talking another Packers victory. Have a great night. Have a great week, and we will see you next week. Go Pack Go.